Yeah. Ride in a dragon. <laughs> Where's your camera? Camera's right here. All right. Yep. Cool. Um, so, Adam, you've uh, you've been at Maker Fair since the start. How have you seen it change over the years? Um, mostly what I've seen change at the Maker Fair over the years is the one is the volume. It's hard to hard to ignore. The number of people now is like many many times what it was when it started. But also I, the the questions I get from even the youngest attendees here at Maker Fair are really really awesome. Uh, especially you know I'm about to do an autograph signing, and the questions that I get at that are fantastic. It's not just like what's your favorite, what's the biggest, what's the stinkiest stuff like that. It's it's really deep questions about like what did you wish you'd known about steel or wood, you know, specific making questions or even taking us to task for stuff we did wrong. I love that kind of dialogue. I love that, you know, the maker culture makes a kid bold enough to want to really ask that kind of stuff and investigate it. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. So a lot of people look up to you. What type of things have you seen that inspire you? Um, you know, it, it's it's constant. Um, the, one of the great things that's happening right now is electronics hacking getting super advanced at the same time as the floor is getting lower and lower and lower. So it's easier and easier and easier. So people are just starting to hack and build and create some of the most awesome things, uh, automated systems for their house or robots or, uh, you know, uh, uh, creations that they can add sound and lights to and stuff like that. So I love checking out that sort of home built aesthetic of, the, of people using electronics in a way that never would have seemed possible when I was a kid. It's crazy. So do you have any favorite electronics prototyping boards, stuff that you play with? Um, I'm currently playing around now with, uh, with some Arduino stuff for a couple of my projects and Raspberry Pi. And then there's another uh, little soundboard we were playing with, and I can't remember the name of it. Um, uh, because it's, I've never even considered putting sound into a lot of my props, because up until now it was prohibitive you know, it's going to cost me hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars to get it to work, and now it's like thirty dollars. Yeah, it's it's really wild. The uh, favorite uh, make projects exhibits that you've seen over the years. What what are a couple that stand out to you? I, I tell you, I, I freak out about the Lego Pavilion. I mean, Legos were just the Legos were my start. That's exactly how I started thinking in three dimensional space. Uh, and watching the creations that people make here are phenomenal. I also love the really big Burning Man projects, like the, this car and the octopus, these guys, you know, there's, there's that drive to make something that gets you out of the space that you're in, that inspires these guys to do something impossible in the most inhospitable place in the world. And I love the creations that come out of that kind of challenge. Did you ever see something here and you go, oh man, I wish I thought of that first? Const not I wish I thought of it first, but boy, I wish I, I, wish I could do that. You know, I, I want to add that to the list of things I got to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's constant and unending here. I see everything I see. Oh, you know, cool. Jet powered unicycles. Awesome. You know, I just, like, all of it inspires me. What's, there's just not enough time. <laughs> That's the biggest challenge. I think if we could solve that problem, that, that, that would be the, be the best make creation in the world. Well, you know, it's, I'm lucky enough to have invested in my shop to make my, to invest in a set of tools that allow me to work really fast. And that's one of the biggest things is that, you know, I try and be really smart with my time so that I can maximize it. It's tricky. What are some of the fast tools, things that people could go and look sander. for? I have a giant sander, a 16-inch sander, and you could literally feed a 2 by 4 into it. And there's just like no wasting time in those little belt sanders where the belt's constantly getting clogged. This is just a giant behemoth. So what, uh, what's, what's the, the, the biggest project or the, the, the epiphany project that you haven't yet made? What's the one that's on your mind that someday you will get to it? I, you know, I've, I've always wanted to make myself a suit of armor. And I've been building a set of metalworking tools of uh, shop bags and uh, phenolic hammers and planet hammers and English wheels and stuff like that, all with the goal of eventually blacksmithing myself a full suit of armor. Hello. And it, I don't know when I'll get around to doing it, but that's absolutely the top of the list. If you get a chance, check out the guy inside who's got the battle armor for cats and mice. Oh, battle! Oh, I've seen his stuff. I've seen his stuff online. It's absolutely gorgeous. Great. Well, thanks for being here every year. Uh, it's everybody, you're a hero, and uh, it, it's great to be inspired and uh, keep things uh, exciting for everybody. I, I really appreciate it. I, I, it's a, it's a. Wonderful position that Maker Fair allows me to come in and talk every year. I love talking to this crowd. It's just so much fun. They love you.
Thanks, Adam.